So there are some questions from Ranjanji. Should I yeah. put it on screen? Yeah, yes. <clears throat> Please elaborate the statement <coughs> from the previous class. Marriage is the platform to accommodate one more person, develop unselfishness and gratitude. That's what was said. It's a platform to accommodate one person, develop unselfishness and gratitude. Please elaborate this statement. Second statement. How marriage is the stepping stone to moksha? So two, two statements that was made. One is to accommodate one more person, develop unselfishness and gratitude. Elaboration on that statement. Second statement is how marriage is the stepping stone to moksha. Elaborate on that also. <clears throat> yeah. We are living in a society where we train ourselves first and we train others also to become possessive, to turn possessive and guarantee that possessions. We are living in a society. What is it that is being done in the society right from the beginning? Individually, we do it to ourselves and then we pass it on to others. That, we, that which we pass it on to others we, is what we call a society. Now, society, na, there is no something called society separately doing anything to us. What we do to ourselves is what we tell others. That's what the name of the society means. Yeah, society na What is it that we do? We have legitimate, we have we have legitimized possessiveness. Not only we have legitimized possessiveness, we want a, we want that possessions to be guaranteed. So we frame a law around it. We frame so many things around it for what? Be possessive and we will ensure that your possessions will not leave you. Correct? Huh? This is how we are operating. Are you okay with the statement? If you are okay with the statement, then rest of the answer becomes very, very clear. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Why do we legitimate possessiveness? Why do we have a system where it is seen as correct? Marriage is one way of legitimizing possessiveness. And it is a guarantee that your possessiveness will and it is a guarantee that your possessions will, will stay with you. So in a marriage, who is the possession? Who is the possession in the marriage? The other. Like whoever the other is. <clears throat> So, from the standpoint of the wife, the husband is the possessor. Sorry, the possessed, the object. From the standpoint of the wife, the husband. Therefore, what is it that is happening there? Marriage is seen as how to keep the possession intact. How to keep the possession intact. 
இல்லையா அது கை விட்டு போயிடக்கூடாது போய் பிடிச்சி வச்சுக்கணும் செல்ஃபிஷ்னஸ் Selfishness and possessiveness are two sides to the same coin. But we are in a society where we have legitimized possessiveness. So when you have made possessiveness legitimate, what have we made it legitimate? Selfishness is very legitimate. That's why everybody says, it's my right. It's my, it's my right. It's my right. It's my, it's my right. Don't I have, can't I even ask this, sir? is it wrong to ask this marriage is a very bold experiment in human life that's why it's called grihastha ashrama it's called grihastha ashrama it's a very bold experiment in human life what can you be can you be unselfish correct sir but first let that person become unselfish and if the other person proves his unselfishness then i will become unselfish because i should not be a fool no isn't it supposing ravi i am i am unselfish 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 and the other person is not at all unselfish then i look like a ha huh? fool ha huh? isn't it so so in order to be safe what to do first first establish the other person is unselfish ah once the other person is unselfish then there is no need for you to become ha huh? see once the other person is unselfish then there is no need for you to from suddenly become unselfish okay na because one person being unselfish marriage is going on no there is a problem are you able to follow why because we are in a society where we have we have made it so legitimate so because of this what happens because of this there is always the problem the same process goes on with objects the same process goes on with beings the same process goes on with relationships and the height of possessiveness happens in the height of possessiveness happens in marriage hmm? even children also you can't be that possessive because beyond a point you know they will ah correct ah wait anga yeah you know you know the even children you know so what do you do you have to make it so binding that the other should not leave you you know because you can't bring that kind of a binding to a to a child also even though they are very good they are there to take care they love and all that deep down the possessiveness in relation to the partner is always is always very high so what do we have to do uda kuda tham enna analu free out ra kuda whatever happens don't give them because of this possessiveness what happens selfishness comes because of this possessiveness selfishness comes hmm why marriage fails if you understand that you will understand this why why does a marriage fail starting point of marriage legitimizing possessiveness na arambhichale that marriage will will fail starting point of marriage is you feel 
you have a legitimacy to to possess it means you have reduced the other person to a thing to one to an object that's why it fails the starting point of marriage itself is a failure it means a question of time three months three years 30 years also 30 years later also they want to separate isn't it it doesn't really matter why because selfishness means encroachment selfishness means selfishness means encroachment selfishness means i will have other priorities but in that person i should be the priority are you able to follow what is selfishness yanak i will have other priorities and move on i will be very busy with 200 things but in that person's head every you know i should be the only priority how does this marriage work it won't it won't work hmm? selfishness means suspicion selfishness means jealous selfishness means interference selfishness means suspicion selfishness means jealous selfishness means interference very difficult to see the other person happy very difficult to to accept the other person can be happy that's why marriage fails why because happiness na le en mulliyama dhan varanum isn't it for the other person have the one and only source of happiness should be other selfishness very well follow that's why if 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 one partner is laughing and joking with somebody else the other partner gets very very irritated why why because how can you be happy you can't be you are not allowed to be happy or all your happiness should be filtered through me only are able to follow that day marriage will survive when the wife is laughing with someone being happy with someone the husband can say very good that marriage will survive if the if the wife is talking to somebody husband can say very good marriage can survive similarly the other way also both ways i'm not talking about husband i'm just saying wife to husband husband to wife that's all Hmm? Are you okay till now? Unselfishness means there is the law. The law of existence says growth happens in space. You have to give space. Growth always happens only when some space is given. Marriage means this is the law of life. growth happens only when there is space in marriage you will not want to give the space to another you will ask for space but you will not give space to are you able to follow this you will want your space but you will not give space to because the law of growth says the law of existence says growth can happen only through space that's why even when they plant they plant with the right spaces no even when they plant you know so beautiful they are isn't it so beautiful knowledge they have what is the distance between two mango trees what should be the distance between two coconut trees what should be the distance between two rice paddy saplings because growth happens only when that space is given you you crush the space when you crush the space there is no there is no growth but sir others is others are taking my space you are selfish that's why you are you are seeing it like are able to follow when you are selfish life will become a battlefield life will be a battlefield for a person who is selfish so marriage has become a battlefield every marriage is a battlefield why the battlefield is possessiveness domination power supremacy jealousy lust quarreling 
nagging fighting over trivial matters fighting over trivial matters it's a it's a it's a very animalistic instinct draw the boundaries and and anybody else coming inside the boundary is unacceptable the dogs will mark the territory cats can come parrots can come tiger lion also can come no problems what should not come avada another dog should not in rest anybody else is anything but and this is called as love we understand each other so well sir we understand each other so 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 well they call it as territorial imperative territorial imperative means you need to have those you need to have those boundaries and you have to fiercely protect it you have to fiercely guard it you cannot allow anybody to enter why because selfishness what is selfishness selfishness is getting irritated at the happiness of others that's all selfishness are you able to follow selfishness in our town irritated at others are you know nobody should be if somebody is happy ama idukala ma siripanga if somebody is laughing immediately say is that the reason to laugh for then what will you laugh for isn't it tom and jerry you can't laugh isn't it laurel hardy you can't laugh charlie chaplin can't laugh then what will you laugh for in life isn't it are able to follow what is selfishness this is selfishness marriage is a very bold attempt to try can you be can you give space and togetherness that is marriage space and togetherness combined is marriage either we give space and divorce togetherness means ah you go your way i go that is not space yeah you go your way i go my way that is sin either that or togetherness togetherness means what kalil gibran puts it very beautifully stay together yet not too near together so beautiful is so beautiful it says stand together stay together yet not too near together for the pillars of the temple stand apart or the pillars of the temple stand apart it's a beautiful temple held by the pillar standing apart if the pillars come too close it collapses if it moves away also it collapses so is this marriage is the marriage is the temple for the pillars of the temple stand apart Hmm. Are you able to follow till now? Sir, yeah. From another angle. From another angle. Then no, no, no. One more angle. Whichever angle impresses you, please change. Yeah. If nothing is impressing you, huh? Don't worry. We will repeat the whole thing again. Nothing is impressing you, sir. You will not stay here. the human mind where is this possessiveness coming from from another angle you see it like this there are only two types of people in this world the world can be divided all the human being can be divided into two parts what are the two parts one where everything has a price you pay the price you will get it that is one one mindset another is where price is meaningless there's no price the so entire world can be divided into these two categories only one category says there is a right, everything has a price there is another set that says there is no such thing called price for price is meaning less marriage unselfishness means you get out of the 
you you get out of that thing in your head about the price the price price another word for price p r i c e p r i z e illa price na ellathu or vela irukku sir cost kutta that's all everything has a All marriages are assassinated. Yeah, all marriages are murdered. Why? Because human beings are so accustomed to purchase everything. Human beings are so accustomed to purchase. We believe we can purchase everything. In that, there is a misunderstanding. Ah. Huh? in that there is a misunderstanding what is a misunderstanding the very effort to purchase something that cannot be purchased the very effort that you put to purchase something that cannot be purchased is murder you can't you can't get it but you somehow believe you can why because in marriage we believe if you cannot purchase you cannot possess if you want to possess you have to purchase make it your own are able to follow what is selfishness now hmm? you cannot you have to make it you have to make it your own why do you have to make it your own because we are so accustomed we are so accustomed to purchase we are so accustomed to purchase everything that is used to buy because for everything we put a price tag for everything there is a price tag there is a tag carefully follow this again i repeat because the human mind is so accustomed to buying purchasing everything one forgets what there are wonderful things in life that cannot be purchased and the very effort you make to purchase that which cannot be purchased is murdering that that's how you murder marriage cannot be purchased love cannot be purchased what can be all the nobler things in life cannot be purchased but the human mind is so accustomed to purchasing online le vaangilna sir isn't it everything ennikalla online le vaangilna isn't it why because we believe so deep rooted that if you cannot purchase a thing you cannot possess it either because the only way to claim possessiveness the only way to claim a legitimacy over possessiveness is you have to say i have bought it are able to follow now idu na vaangita sir adunala idu enno undu da nobody can claim it this is called in marriage are able to follow in marriage what is the attempt in marriage now the question is this now what is the attempt in marriage huh? purchase the other <laughs> how do i purchase the other purchase the other how do i purchase the other pretend you are pretend as though you are affectionate pretend all this you know, see why i'm not against all that but why love marriage is fail is bound to fail we are not cursing or anything is bound to fail why because there are lot of pretension going on there you see it is simply a a pretend now how long can you go on pretending you cannot are able to follow so what they did in the past they knew how the human mind is and you have to get the human mind out of this wrong way of selfishness and how can you get rid of selfishness only when you can accommodate only when you can accommodate one person in your life when you can accommodate one person in your life and try to be unselfish in relation to that person then marriage is a very meaningful 
Are you okay till now? Then marriage is a very meaningful thing. If not, marriage is always something that we are trying to be legitimizing selfishness. So, now read the statement. What is the statement now? Place the question. What is the statement? Anybody? Ah, marriage is the platform to accommodate one more person, develop unselfishness and gratitude. This is the state. Are you able to follow now? Marriage is the platform to accommodate one more person. Develop unselfishness. Now, how do you develop unselfishness here? How do you develop unselfishness here? How do you develop gratitude here? For which we have to go into we have to go into the Vedic vision of marriage. Till now we spoke about what marriage is happening in the, in the way that people have misunderstood marriage as a result of which it's not at all working to develop unselfishness and gratitude and to take it to moksha. We need to understand the Vedic concept of the Vedic vision of marriage. Now I'm, now I'm moving into that. Are you okay till now? Any, uh, uh, are you okay till now? What is the Vedic vision of marriage by which you develop unselfishness? Hmm? First thing, marriage is called samskara. In Vedas, in Vedanta, marriage is called samskara. Carefully follow what all I am going to say now. Hmm? <clears throat> Samskara means huh? Samskara means ritual. Huh? Samskara means that an act by which some dirt is removed, purified. Samskara means purification. There are 40 samskaras. 40 from, from the time you enter to the womb till you die, antiyashti. Means what all happens after you die. So all these are called purifications. So samskara. So the first indication is samskara. Samskara means you are purifying. Purifying for both. Are you able to follow now? The word samskara itself is an indication of where is the concept of love and understanding and all that here? Today's concept marriage means? Are you able to follow? Marriage means it should, it should come out of love, no sir. Vedas come and say, I don't understand what your love and all is. Marriage means it is first thing. It's called samskara. Are you okay till now? Second, the marriage itself is called Vivaha. The marriage itself is called Vivaha. Vivaha is a compound of three, three roots. Moon, Senda, you get it? Vivaha, I am not getting into the Sanskrit grammar and all that. The very word Vivaha means leading the person. Meaning, uprooting a person from one place and planting that person in another place. That's called Vivaha. Etymologically, Vivaha means that. That's why we say Vivaha, isn't it? Even though loosely we call it as Kalyana, Kalyana means auspicious, good. How does it become unselfish? Marriage is not seen as a tool for your marriage is not a tool for your so-called attachments, so-called possessiveness. The very purpose of marriage is purification. Are you okay till now? Vivaha means purification. What is the purification? 
what is the dirt from which you should get purified? What is the dirt that we should know by now? What is the dirt by which the samskara is trying to purify? The dirt which the samskara called vivaha is trying to purify is selfishness. Selfishness is the dirt which the vivaha is trying to purify. In the definition of marriage is not is not seen, known, heard, understood. Marriage means what? I like that person, you like me, I like me, we both will live together as long as our, as long as our like continues, as soon as the like stops. Because like has a shelf life. See, all your likes has a shelf life. Marriage doesn't have a shelf life. That's why in the Vedic concept of marriage, there is no such thing called divorce at all. Because it's a purification process. In the purification process, why will you want to? Why will you want to stop? Why will you want to divorce? Why will you want to separate? Because marriage is seen as a vivaha samskara. Hmm? The wife is called dharma patni. The wife is called yajna patni. The wife, there are various words given to the wife. The wife is called dharma patni. The wife is called yajna patni. Beautiful is that uh, marriage. Beautiful is a Vedic vision. Today we can just hear about it. That's all. It looks like so backward. Hearing it itself looks like so backward all this. Is. The very concept of it is purification. Hmm? So, so wonderful. And then she is called Dharma Patri. She is called Yajna Patri. Yajna Patri means one who supervises the sacrificer. Yajna Patri na one who supervises one who supervises the sacrificer. In a Yajna, who is the sacrificer? Ram Subramaniam. Yajna ritual, who is the sacrificer? The husband. Who, who supervises whether it is done rightly or not? The wife. That's why she is called it means she obviously has the knowledge of that. Are you able to follow? It means she obviously has the knowledge of it and she and she knows it. Otherwise, how can she supervise? Because supervising means she should know it. No, sir, women were not educated at all. They are all backward. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. We get carried away by politics more than Politics are always more interesting than the, than the, than the truths. So, yajna, she is called Yajna, one who supervises. Another name for wife is Dharma Patini, meaning wedded to Dharma. Yajna is equated to Dharma. Hmm? That's why I don't know whether people remember this. Even today, in a very some of the Brahmin families mechanically practice it. They don't even know what they are doing. Brahmin first of all. There is no such thing called Brahmin at all nowadays. For, for some activities, the wife will be on the left. For some activities, the wife will be on the right. So beautiful is the distinction. For some activities, the wife will say, come to the left. For some activities, they say, wife should come to the right. For what activities, the wife should come to the right? Anything that is related to higher, dharma, yajna, wife should come to the right. Any worldly activities like all that, she can be an other line material. Are able to follow? It means, what is the vision of marriage? What is the concept of marriage? How unselfishness was inculcated here. How, how it was designed to lead to moksha. This is how it is designed. Are you okay till now? We'll, we'll elaborate it again. Then what is husband? Bartha. Bartha means supporter, lord, maintainer. Bartha means supporter. Bartha means lord, 
பர்த்தமின் சப்போர்ட் லார்டுன்னா காட் அங்க விஷ்ணு லார்ட் மீன்ஸ் த காட் விஷ்ணு த மெயின்டைனர் சப்போர்டர் சப்போர்டர் ஆஃப் வாட் supporter of dharma why because what is it that is going to support you and the other what is it that is going to support the family what is it that is going to support the society is love going to support is attachments going to support is possessiveness going to support what is going to support you what is going to support the family what is going to support the society everything what is it dharma it is dharma that is the support marriage is a recognition of that dharma and trying to get a human being convinced about this dharma are you okay brahmachari ashrama la in the student stage la a person studies all this theoretically the theoretical understanding itself doesn't bring a transformation so what all was theoretically studied there grihastha ashrama the marriage becomes a, a marriage becomes the natural thing to practice what all has been studied you have to practice illana cook book aparchi nerda patta isn't it a cook book cook versus the actual cook illa cook book cook na yaar ram subramani i am the cook book cook yeah, i can say the, the way that i talk about you think i know how to make everything isn't it mother is the actual so so how does it what all you have studied as dharma in the in the grihastha in the brahmacharya ashrama the place to learn it and practice it is grihastha ashrama marriage are you able to follow and why it is kept very important because this grihastha ashrama people are the backbone of the society because they they have a responsibility of their own growth and they have a responsibility of taking care of the other three ashramas look at that how unselfishness is inculcated here hmm? are you able to follow not only they have to take care of themselves they have to take care of the other three ashramas for who will take care of the sanyasi who will take care of the sanyasi sanyasi will say bhavati biksham dehini he will come who will take care another sanyasi thus the ashrama people have to take care of the brahmacharya have to take care of the vanaprastha have to take care of the sanyasi so wife is constantly reminding what are you taking care of all these three are you taking care of all these three as one says no no first let us take care of ourselves no first let us worry about ourselves no self help is the best help no so why not do that first hmm? the entire vivaha is a beautiful arrangement dharma is taught theoretically and a a practical experiment and all the marriage is a practical experiment to practice what all you have studied as dharma are you able to follow dharma la first lesson in a one and only dharma don't be selfish don't be adam dharma don't be selfish adam dharma loka sangraha and chitta shuddhi that is how marriage i am combining both the questions and answer how does it lead to moksha marriage grihastha ashrama is two purposes chitta shuddhi and loka sangraha loka sangraha means taking care of the other three brahmacharya the uh, brahmachari has to be taken care of the vanaprastha has to be taken care of the sanyasi has to be taken care of that is loka sangraha what is chitta shuddhi helping each other in dharma helping each other in dharma we both are wedded to dharma 
and who's the witness? Who's the witness? Who's the witness? Agni is the witness. That's why we say, how can you take clear? Yeah, how can you take a pradikya in front of Agni and then and then break it? Because you take a pratigna in front of Agni and break it, he will burn you. Really, yeah? Really, he will burn you. How, is he, how will he burn you? Worry, anxiety, stress, other than the Agni is burning you from inside. Because I have moved from, instead of using it for unselfishness, I am legitimizing my selfishness here. I am legitimizing my possessiveness. Hmm? So, first samskara. Asmanta kinna peru Bartha. What is the name of the wife? Yajna Patni or Dharma Patni. There is a beautiful set of mantras that come after Saptapati. In the traditional vivaha, there is this thing called Shaptapati. Shaptapati, you know, seven steps they take. Take each and every step, they take one other. Wow. Yeah. Indian constitution, but you could have Shaptapati Panada marriage. It is. Hindu marriage act, but you should have done Shaptapati. Arya Samajala Damana. Shaptapati Pandale, you can have a marriage, Hindu marriage act certificate only. You are married now. Because Shaptapati is a very beautiful seven vows. Seven vows they take. Seven disciplines we will follow. We both will follow certain disciplines. For our union is not for pampering each other. Our union is not for lust. Our union is not for pampering. Our union is not for promoting our selfishness. Our union is for Chitta Shuddhi, Loka Sangraha, Moksha. Are you able to follow? After the Shaptapati comes the beautiful mantra. Shaptapati is very interesting. After Shaptapati, there comes a beautiful mantra. Now that we are, now that we are married, we have agreed to be lifelong Saka. Now that we are married, now that we have done the seven steps and taken the vow, we agree to be lifelong Saka. Saka na? What is the meaning of the word Shaka? Friends. Friends in a space is there not. Friends in a space is there not. Yeah, you know. Are you able to follow? From all this only, we bring in all the English words and talk about it. But the concepts is, but why do we say let us be? Let us be friends. They will not encroach on each other. They will not encroach on each other. They will not spy on each other. They will not be jealousy about each other. They will not try to suffocate each other. They give the space. You follow? But marriage today has become a legitimacy for possessiveness. We are married, no? Therefore, you have to be bound. People say, that's why because of this Vedic vision is not there, the so-called marriages are collapsing. Why? Because it is bondage and they say, we don't, we don't believe in this institution of marriage itself. I used to wonder who coins those terminologies. Hmm? All terminologies they have Long distance relationship, short distance relationship, Huh? You should hear these people talking. Tall words they give for this. Isn't it? Benefits. No benefit. You take you know, all these various terms, all these various terminologies come from where? Come from the ideal of marriage, which is Chitta Shuddhi, Loka Sangraha, Moksha is not taught at all. Herd instinct. Are you okay now? It's not taught at all. 
therefore what happens the very the very notion of marriage in the way that it is happening today is bound to fail when we say marriages are collapsing marriages are breaking it has to break how can it survive because when the root of it is selfishness it has to in the root of it is selfishness it has to and what all words they give and the words they give is more confusing than the words they give is more confused hmm? sometimes i used to think what all terminologies they who sits and coins these terminologies hmm? the most important person in my life mr all anim and where shall all that word come and everybody is so happy using those everybody is so happy using those words isn't it we are in a toxic relationship sir ha <laughs> huh? we are in a toxic relationship sir okay na correct ha ha we are in a toxic oh everything about that person is toxic ha huh? it is selfishness that is it is selfishness huh. the list is unending all list there open relationship sir huh. long distance short, short, long distance relationship short distance relationship abro open relationship abro open relationship spouse that is another type of relationship spouse na that is another rajkumar ha vela research konnu research all this kink all words they use I, every time i go i learn few words and come nalla vartha kandupidikira rebound in a relationship correct huh? correct no i am not saying on my own no these are all things that people prabhu correct no rebound i am in a rebound relationship sir huh? just for now just for now just for now na அது ஒரு நாள் இருக்கலாம் ஒரு மாசம் இருக்கலாம் மூணு மாசம் இருக்கலாம் ஜஸ்ட் ஃபார் சி திஸ் திஸ் நோஷன் ஆஃப் மேரேஜ் இட்ஸ் பவுண்ட் டு இட்ஸ் பவுண்ட் டு ஃபெயில் இட் டசன் ரியலி மேட்டர் ஹவு மச் எவர் டைம் தே ஃபெலோ டேக்ஸ் டு சூஸ் த பர்சன் அண்ட் ஆல் இட் டசன் ரியலி மேட்டர் இட்ஸ் கோயிங் டு இட்ஸ் கோயிங் டு கொலாப்ஸ் இட்ஸ் கோயிங் டு கொலாப்ஸ் ஓன்லி தே ஆர் நாட் கர்சிங் ஆர் எனி திங் ஐ எம் சேங் திஸ் இஸ் ஹவு த நேச்சர் ஆஃப் இட் இஸ் ஸோ ஹவு டஸ் இட் how how is it related to moksha the vision of life is all everything that you do must take you to moksha adan tamru all that you do must take you to moksha if ma- if so if if people have to get married that marriage has to be in connection with moksha vivaha you are so rooted in selfishness uprooted from selfishness and i asked quite a few people long back the vivaha meaning to me ah vivaha means the girl moving from her house to husband house and uprooted it so i said what a meaning it is are you able to follow that's not the you don't need vedas to come and give such you don't need vedas upanishads to come and give such gross meanings are able to follow so what is it you are so rooted in selfishness accommodating the other person means what accommodating the accommodating the needs of the others accommodating the moods of the other accommodating the needs accommodating the moods accommodating their hmm insanity also sometimes they are accommodating their insanity accommodating their madness whatever be it 
but you share some blissful moments also with them. No, that is forgot. But then you share some, but then you have enjoyed some blissful moments. Forgetting that is ingratitude. Yes, definitely there are moods. Definitely there are. Definitely there are moods. Definitely there are demands. But at the same time, it has been some, there have been some blissful moments. There have been some wonderful moments. There have been moments where you know the what is it? Heart uh, huh? Heart beat in the huh? Allah, heart diseases are Allah. <laughs> in, in love, will you say, I got palpitated in love? Huh? What is that word? Huh? Heart throbbing. Heart throbbing huh? hmm? See, I loved up. Huh? Huh? Super senior citizen, I said, class at the time. Not even one word. Not even one word people are knowing. What you do with this people? They have been they have been blissful moments also. They have been joyful moments also. They have been wonderful moments also. Ignoring that, forgetting that is selfishness, ingratitude. So what are you grateful for? The blissful moments other has given. The blissful moments other has given. They gave. You can't say no. You can't deny that. Unless I only first day length, it's only misery. Na? You are lying. You are lying. Correct? From the day one, sir, in my marriage, from day one, nothing went right. It's only misery after misery after misery after misery. Yeah. There are blissful moments. So what is gratitude means thankful to the blissful moments. What is the blissful moments? The love being shared. The affection being shared. Are you able to follow? What is moksha? Liberation. Liberation from what? Liberation from selfishness. By reading 100 books on unselfishness, you can never become unselfish. By, by hearing 1000 lectures on unselfishness, you can never become unselfish. Therefore, what they did in the past? The institution of marriage. From that vision, marriage is a very essential tool. In the way that marriage is seen today, it's bound to, it's bound to fail and no doubt people have no conviction in this institution. Why? No doubt people have no conviction in this institution. Why? Because it has got nothing to do with any dharma. It has got nothing to do with anything higher. It's all about it's all about infatuation, legitimizing selfishness. In any relationship, when, when selfishness is considered legitimate, it is bound to are you able to follow? Marriage is a very important. Marriage is a very essential to, for what? To practice dharma. To practice dharma. What is practicing dharma means? What is practicing dharma means? Practicing dharma means an understanding. What is understanding? With one person I try. What is that one thing I want to try with the other? What is the definition of dharma we have seen in other classes? What you don't... <coughs> what you don't want others to do to you, you don't do it to another. Where, where can you try it? With one person. That's marriage. That's marriage. Are you able to follow? That's marriage. 
this is how marriage helps a person to moksha directly marriage has got no relevance to moksha it's not a direct cause and effect it is a very good preparation for in chitta shuddhi and loka sangraha that is why marriage karma yoga grihastha ashrama are all used synonymously again i repeat marriage karma yoga grihastha ashrama they are all used very synonymously why because you have already taken in brahmacharya ashrama from the society when are you going to repay it grihastha ashrama marriage gives you a chance to repay because i am already debtor indebted so first what do i do i repay that and when i repay that yagya patni means helping each other in performing yagya helping each other in performing yagya when i fail When I fail doing yagya, Ranjini has to remain with me. If she fails doing yagya, I have to remain. Thus, nurturing one another, that's nourishing one another. You grow. Very well, follow now. That's how marriage is a very beautiful institution for practicing dharma. Today, the very concept of marriage has turned so ultra that it has becoming very redundant, and it is bound to be redundant because it is all about selfishness. Selfishness means what? Possessing. Hmm. What is possessiveness? Possessiveness means the other will be available to you at your beck and call. That is called possessiveness. again i repeat what is possessiveness means the other should be available to you at your convenience at your beck and call ad on the tv remote madri ad isn't it like a remote whenever you feel like taking you will take and whenever you drop it yeah. when you pick it up the other should should agree and come when you drop the other should stay quiet because why i love you no is this love it's not because i love you no because i love you therefore what you do become my be a, a slave today marriage is slavery because it's not marriage is slavery selfishness has turned into it now marriage is a tool the first bold step to come out of selfishness is that's why they say in marriage starting with one person and then it doesn't end with that person at least accommodate the family of that person starting with that person spreading into accommodating the family inikla condition in a the oh, father and mother not alive sir very good very good uh, proposal it is why because they are not there ah huh? why because accommodating it's not accommodating first you accommodate one and then you accommodate other remember the circle of identification diagram that we always show that is it first you first that one person comes then the then the family comes then the society comes that it goes on enlarging and enlarging and large home should be the center and not the boundary ramatirtha starting point of it is one and then accommodating 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 means what in love you will not even use the word accommodating in love when you are really in love you will not say i am accommodating and all you will not say i am understanding and accommodation understanding words vandale edo or some wrong misunderstanding is there love says i don't know what you are saying love knows nothing of this 
That's why it's called Vivaha. That's why it's called Vivaha. The names given to them itself is indicator of Dharma. The names indicator, the, the names given to them itself is indicator of and then finally they say, now that we have taken this vow, we are going to remain Saka for forever. Forever na future Janmas Langadayat. Rajkumar. Forever na in this lifetime or he will go and do research. Next Janma also, will you want to marry the same person? In the Janma, I don't want this person. Why in the next Janma also, I want the same person? So forever means by changing what's going to happen. See, by, by divorce, what is going to happen? Nothing is going to happen. Why? Because again, selfishness is if marriage has legitimized, if marriage has le legitimized, legalized possessiveness, na, divorce, divorce has made it. Huh? Ah, correct. Divorce has made selfishness more stronger. It has made it much more stronger. Because we know how to make all that we do, so we have to legitimize this. That's all. Once you legitimize it, it becomes it becomes correct. In the vision of Vedas, in the vision of Vedanta, marriage is for Chitta Shuddhi. Marriage is for Loka Sangraha. That's why it's called a Samskara. It's a purification act. It's an act by which you, you purify yourself. That's why we say marriage is a platform for Practicing unselfishness, thankfulness, and gratitude. What is the real gratitude? Hey. By omission or commission, you violate dharma. If somebody points out to you how grateful you should be to the other person, that's marriage. They will follow. What is marriage? By omission or commission, we will, both will tend to move. It's natural. So, moving away is not the problem at all. But when somebody, somebody points out to you and guides you back, how grateful you have to be to that person. That's why in marriage, partners are grateful to each other. Are you able to follow now? They are grateful to each other because what is being violated? Omission or commission? Intentionally and it doesn't matter. It, it's bound to happen. Yeah. Other person says, no. No, no. You are moving away from you are moving away from dharma. You are moving away from dharma. In Valmiki Ramayana, Valmiki writes, when Janaka gives Sita to Rama, he says this. Take, take Sita with you, Rama. She is a treasure. Why she is a treasure? kingdom yeah. Is she a treasure because she is beautiful? Is she a treasure because she is coming with lot of wealth, lot of virtues and values? He says she is a Treasure, cherish her. Why? Because she is your Dharma Patri. She is Yajna Patri. Are you able to follow? That is the vision of marriage. Not in the way that we understand marriage today. In the way that we see marriage and understand marriage today, it's a comedy. Yeah. Marriage is one joke and divorce is another joke. It doesn't make any Married or divorced doesn't make any difference at all. Why? Because the ideal is missed completely. What is the ideal? The ideal of the ideal of dharma. What is dharma? Unselfishness. But human beings have legitimized it, isn't it? How beautifully they have given the Dharma Shastra. Manu gives eight types of marriages. Eight types of marriages he gives. Asura marriage, Pishasha marriage, 
அசூரா மேரேஜ் ராம சுப்பிரமணியம் அசூரா மேரேஜ் என்ன தெரியுமா டவுரி வாங்கின் மேரேஜ் பண்ணிட்டு அதுக்கு பேர் அசூரா மேரேஜ் அனு சேஸ் இஃப் யூ டேக் அ டவுரி அண்ட் மேரி தட் கால் அசூரா அசூரிக் மேரேஜ் இட் இஸ் பிகாஸ் யூ ஹாவ் பர்ச்சேஸ்ட் அ ப்ராப்பர்டி அவ்வளவுதான் யூ ஹாவ் சிம்பிளி பர்ச்சேஸ்ட் ஹி கால்ஸ் இட் ஹஸ் அசூரா விசாஷான அப்டக்ஷன் தட்ஸ் வை ராவணாஸ் ராவண ட்ரை விசாஷான த பெஸ்ட் இஸ் ராம்ஹி விவாக ராம்ஹி விவாக மீன்ஸ் ராம்ஹி விவாக என்னது மாடர்ன் டே டெர்மினாலஜி இல்ல ராம்ஹி விவாக இஸ் த பெஸ்ட் மேரேஜ் அகார்டிங் டு தர்மசாஸ்திரம் இந்த மாடர்ன் டே டெர்மினாலஜி ராம்ஹி விவாக இஸ் வாட் நோ படி வாண்ட்ஸ் டு டூ நோ படி லைக்ஸ் டு ஹியர் தட் வாட் இஸ் தட் இந்த மாடர்ன் டே லாங்குவேஜ்ல அதை எப்படி டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணலாம் ராம்ஹி விவாக இஸ் அரேஞ்சு மேரேஜ் you know that it's arranged marriage they are they see the elders see the dharmic nature of the person the elders see the dharmic nature of both the persons they 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 see all this and then they choose and then they say get get married and they get married and they live happily also ever after yeah ipo irukra marriage na i should choose my life partner no i should choose my life partner no please choose who stopping you on what basis will you choose on what basis will you choose whoever pampers you you will think very understanding yeah whoever pampers you whoever makes your selfishness looks very holy to you you will marry that person because he says your selfishness is great he is pampering you therefore what happens idu vandu endha type liye varada ninth category yeah dharma shastra la eight categories are there in dharma shastra today's marriage we have to add one new category ninth category what is that ninth category yeah. dhandarva one undu irundha pogura dhandarva marriage they were they love marriage kada idu adhu peru secret marriage they secretly marry illaya yeah. shakuntalam la that's what happened in in shakuntalam one of the epic that fellow got secret marriage adalla in inferior inni girukra marriage undu i don't know what to call that one are you able to follow how it is helping in unselfishness ramhi means that which is leading you to brahman ramhi na brahman Brahmana, Brahman, all comes from the same root. Yeah. Brahmi marriage, la, they worry about the achara of the family. In Brahmi marriage, they worry about, in the arranged marriage, they worry about the achara of the, of the family because the child influenced by that, what achara the child will have? Are you able to follow? Achara means discipline. So they will worry, so, so they will... we we'll find out all that because they are going to be friends forever they have to help each other in dharma it means how much time must be spent on locating innikla compatibility na innikki compatibility na no connection to all this innikla compatibility na i don't know what people think as compatibility herd instinct about marriage these are all the herd instinct about marriage and i said last week marriage is a platform to practice unselfishness gratitude it leads it should lead a person to moksha both the person need sanyasa is a stage where i can say i am so self motivated that i can aspire for moksha directly that is sanyasa Manaprastha is neither a sannyasa nor grihastha. Halfway here, halfway there. That is Manaprastha. Grihastha means I need help of somebody. I need the help of somebody. Who I can take as a help? 
another person at my level i can take as a help and we both help each other are able to follow sanyasa is where you don't need anybody to motivate you inspire you for moksha for you are already inspired motivated vanaprastha means one leg here one leg there there in between cat adu vandha the sandhya time madri sandhya time means you will never know whether it is night dark or light isn't it we have two sandhya times this is one in the morning and one in the we, we really don't know uh, so vanaprastha is something like like sandhya time grihastha ashrama you are grateful to the other person you are thankful to the other person why because the other person is constantly inspiring you guiding you to moksha in order to do that they follow a achara a discipline achara means nigla these words and all have become so backward words nigla the words la use pannale people think backwardness ah adalla old well useless old we are all we are all modern people sir we are all very advanced we come from very advanced society what is this advanced to society in the ages Ten years of love, three months of marriage. That's the advancement. <laughs> Ten months they live in love with each other. Three months only they can live in. Why? Because in the way that marriage is seen today, possessiveness and selfishness is legitimized by the marriage of today. That's why it is breaking. As as I am saying, why it is breaking? we are discussing what is the other way out which is the vedic vedantic way of looking at marriage so even though i started by two questions then in the end i combined both because both one follows the this is answering both the questions sir yeah with this we conclude for today hopefully next week we will read the six uh, reasons for marriage whatever we have discussed today the six will come under like when we read the six you will know exactly where how all this is put it in a very different different seriously